almost stalker. This happened when I was 19 or 20. I was an attractive and very petite female, five foot three, 100 pounds. I was at a beach near my house in New Jersey in the middle of the day, but it was early May and about 60 degrees out, so not too many people were there, maybe two or three on the beach if I recall correctly. I was by myself in a bathing suit sitting on my towel reading a book when this man came up to me. The man was probably in his late 30s, early 40s, fit and what most people would consider attractive. He sat down on my towel and asked me what I was reading. I was already freaked out that a stranger would come up and sit on my towel with me, but I answered. He kept asking questions like my name, age, where I went to school, and I made up all of my answers. Then he moved over and sat right next to me and started putting his hand on my crotch. I screamed and ran, and luckily there was someone else on the beach at this time who looked over at us so he didn't chase me. I ran back to my car that was in a parking lot about a half a mile away. There were no other cars there, and I looked around and I didn't see the man anywhere. I assumed my scream and the other person on the beach scared him off. Fast forward two or three days later and I get a letter in the mail without a return address. It was stamped from a post office in a town in Pennsylvania, where I remember the man saying he was from. Keep in mind, I was still living with my parents at the time. I opened the envelope, and it's two pages, front and back, handwritten from the man. I know I did not tell him any real information about myself so I have no idea how he found my address or any of the info he wrote about. He knew my full name, the school I went to, I guess all stuff you could find online, my parents' names and cell phone numbers. He also wrote about seeing me at a place where I was a few days prior. I was freaking out at this point and shaking. He signed his name and left a phone number, but again, no address. I immediately went to the police with the letter in a plastic bag in case they would look for fingerprints. I told the detective about him touching me on the beach as well. The detective said he couldn't do anything because there was no evidence of a crime, but offered to call and scare him. I agreed. He kept the letter and I'm assuming he called the man that day and told him to leave me alone. I never heard from him again, but I was sure I saw him following me in a car shortly after. After I ran away on the beach, he must have either followed me back to my house or gotten my license plate number to get all of the information that he wrote about. But I looked everywhere and there were no cars behind me when I left or really anywhere in the parking lot. I was paying extremely close attention. I also didn't go straight back to my house. I drove about an hour away to my friends because I was so freaked out and didn't want to go home until late that night. So he either followed me all throughout that time, got information from my license plate, not sure how he would do that since the car is not even registered in my name or had been following me previously. So, creepy man on the beach, let's not meet again. I called their bluff.
Long time lurker, but this is my first post here. I apologize for any errors. Some background information. I am female and at the time of this encounter, I was about 15 to 16. I grew up in a really rich town. Mansions were common. In fact, my house was one of the smaller ones in my town. And growing up, I was poorer than most of my friends. Even though my family's net worth is about 1.5 million. So I was far from poor. Anyways, this is important to the context of the story. I was driving home late one night from a friend's house. It was about 1 a.m. and since he lived on the other side of town, I had to take some windy, relatively isolated back roads to my house. It was really dark out that night and I was blasting the music and wasn't paying too close of attention to the road. There were no other cars out this late and so I had the road to myself. It was a really narrow road too, so I was sort of glad that there was no one on the oncoming lane. The houses that were nearby were set far off the road, and their lights were off. All of this was normal. There was nothing to do in my town at night anyways, so it was always pretty quiet past 9pm. Then I saw something that was really out of place. Up ahead, three homeless people, two men and a woman, were on the side of the road. I didn't get a super great look at them, but if I had to guess, they were probably in their 40s. Now, I'm calling them homeless, but I'm not sure if they actually were. They looked it, though. Their clothes were filthy, old, and ripped and none of them looked like they had showered recently. I immediately turned off my music and focused on them ahead. I remember thinking, what the hell are these people doing here? We are about an hour's drive from any major city, so I wondered why they traveled all the way here. We didn't have any sort of resources for homeless people, and it was not a good place to go begging as most of the people here were pretty stingy. I was so confused. I slowed down slightly as I approached them. They were dangerously near the side of the road, and I didn't want to accidentally hit one of them. As I get closer, I think I see one of them move out onto the road. It's dark though, and my car has weak headlights, so I'm not exactly sure what is going on. I flick on my high beams so that I can see. What I saw almost gave me a panic attack. They had spread out across the narrow road, completely blocking my path. There was nowhere for me to swerve without hitting one of them. They stood facing me, squinting. They weren't smiling creepily and they weren't carrying any weapons that I could see unlike a lot of the other encounters I see described on here. But I was still majorly freaked out. Fear shot through me. I didn't know what to do, but I didn't want to slow down or stop because I was pretty sure that's what they wanted me to do. I didn't know what they wanted, but I wasn't sticking around to find out. Some of you may call me stupid, thoughtless or mean for what I did next, but it was the only option that I could think of. I kept going in my lane, straight at the man who was blocking the part of the road in front of me. I did not slow down or speed up, I just kept my speed steady at 20 miles per hour, and I did not stop. I kept telling myself, he'll move out of the way. He's not going to stand there and get hit. They have to be bluffing. I approached and he still did not budge. None of them did. I started to get nervous that they really weren't going to move out of the way. 
but I kept going. Eventually, at the last possible second, the man jumped out of the way, and I was able to get past their blockade. I kept driving and didn't look back. So, homeless people who wandered into my town and then tried to jump my car, I'm assuming this was an attempted car theft. Let's not meet. Open letter to the man who wanted to save me. To the man who was almost my roommate, Thomas. We met at a McDonald's after being given each other's phone number by a mutual friend. We were both looking for new roommates, as you wanted to leave the halfway home slash shelter you were living in, and I wanted to get away from financially and mentally abusive roommates. We talked for hours that first day. You were amazed by my openness and my lifestyle, and I felt it was important that you knew about how I was active in the BDSM slash kink community. You told me your interest in it, and I did my best to explain where to get information and explain different terms and answered all your questions. Then we came onto a hiccup. I personally am strictly poly. Due to a bad history, I felt no need to explain our first meeting. Well, you are strictly monogamous. You questioned why, what it meant, how I loved. Why couldn't I have that one and only? After we left, we texted a lot. We met again alone at a park and talked about being possible roommates and you were excited as you told me about your research. Your introduction to the lifestyle as it was. It was getting cold and you offered to hang out in your van, but I felt uncomfortable getting into your vehicle alone with you, so I insisted on my car. We talked for a while longer until I made up an excuse to leave. It had been hours, and I was tired. I had work in the morning. I just had things I wanted to do that didn't involve you. The next day, our mutual friend insisted on lunch. He is the type of person that nothing scares him. He lives on adrenaline and laughs in the face of death, and he started our conversation with, I'm so sorry, I had no idea. I was already confused, but he continued. Don't go anywhere alone with Thomas. Don't move in with him. Don't get in his car. And don't meet him anywhere private. He explained that Thomas had been talking to him about how much he wanted to kidnap a woman and keep her with him. And how perfect I would be because he could rescue me. Fix me. Teach me that monogamy was the right way. I took his advice. I wouldn't meet anywhere alone with Thomas after this. My friend and I would see him. I'd text him. But I'd always make excuses. So he started taking it out on my friend. She's seeing you, isn't she? You are tricking me. You're a bastard and keeping her for yourself. Just getting more and more crazy as time went. My friend would give me updates and explained he was talking about kidnapping co-workers now. How, since finding out about the kink community and that both him and I are in it, he felt that he could tell my friend all his deepest and darkest secrets, and he wouldn't feel protective of me. I stopped texting back. He started actively avoiding him when Thomas wasn't being aggressive towards him, which was hard when they worked together. The last time I heard, Thomas was fired for inappropriate actions towards one of the female workers. Neither my friend nor I have heard from him again. So, Thomas, if you ever stumble upon this, 
I hope that we never meet again.